South Lake High School graduation. So let's give a round of applause for the that's here today so I'm just touched and I'm even more pleased like Dr. Brown said we were able to have our first year as the Allen T. Subiyama High School at South Lake but again we also aka known as ATS and we were able to have this beautiful wonderful celebration in our community it normally doesn't happen but we're gonna we're gonna do it right and we're gonna show them that the community is a beautiful community and this is one step towards start recognizing our community so i just wanted to put that out there so thank everyone for being here and students thank you for inspiring me 
So give me a moment so I can get organized, so I can kind of walk you through our program today. So just give me a moment. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have some staff reflection. It's important because we don't know when we're going to see each other again. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do that? Okay. What, we, it looks like we're gonna go past that, so excuse me. What we're gonna do next, though, is we're gonna have some acknowledgement. We actually have two acknowledgements today. And before um, we get to the one acknowledgement that I'm gonna put a little back, and not because the individual is not important, it's because we just want to save the best for last. So before I start, I want to, I don't see, if the gentleman that I'm looking for, that I needed some help from, and I hope he made it, um, his name is uh, Clayton Marsh. Is Clayton Marsh with us? Clayton, could you, could you come over? I need your help. I do. Please help me out. Because you know this gentleman just as well as I do, and I, and I just would like your assistance if you could. Yeah, thank you for bearing with us. I mean, this is really important because uh, I'm glad you made it because uh, I couldn't present this acknowledgement without you because you've been with us for three years now, three years now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this is cool. We got you back on the football field. So I want everybody to, uh, before we get started with the acknowledgement, I want to uh, share uh, who this gentleman is. This is uh, Clayton Marsh. He's been part of the uh, rebranding process for three years. And, with him. and I just want to say, I've been in the Seattle Public Schools for about 26 years. 26 years. And I never questioned anyone's commitment to young people. I never questioned anyone's commitment to young people. But one thing that I've never seen in my 26 years yeah. is somebody is committed to this young right here. I've never you see all the seen anybody committed. Just look around. You can see it on our Banners, podium, you can see it on uh, table cover. You will see it at the end of the month in front of our school because it was the visionary behind everything that shows who we have become. And the website. And it, he dug in his own pocket. He dug in his own pocket. And just the amount of time that he spent making ATS a special place for all of you, you just don't know. He's the behind the scenes guy, but he's there right there, and this has to be. So, what I wanted to do, what I wanted you to do, I wanted to take something to you to to show you how much we appreciate you at ATS. So, I want to read to you what I'm about to present to Mr. Clayton Marsh. It says, the Allen T. Sugiyama High School at South Lake 2021 Believe, Inspire, and Apollo Award presented to Clayton Marsh. And here's a special quote that sums up who this man is. Your time is your life. That is why the greatest gift you can give someone is your time. Rick Warren. So on behalf of the ATS family, Clayton Marsh, we want to present you with the Believe, Inspire, and Power Award. So thank you for everything. We appreciate you. 
Uh, Kelly Dugar, read this special acknowledgement for our leader and everything above, because Dr. Brown is just too much. Too much. And you just don't know how special we are. If you do, you would be on your feet. You would be on your feet if you knew what Dr. Lloyd Davis Brown brought to not only ATS, but the South End. Y'all can do better than that. Dr. Lori Davis Brown. No, no, come on. And Kelly Dugar, another behind the scenes person that we couldn't live without. Could you just kind of read and share what the award says? To Dr. Laura Davis Brown, congratulations on your perseverance and determination in earning your doctoral degree. Your commitment and dedication is an inspiration to us all. With much appreciation, your ATS family. Thank you, family. They snuck me. I didn't know they were doing that. Dr. Powell gives a lot of credit to everybody else, but was instrumental in what you see happening here today. Our name change, the signs on the building and around the building you will see in, in the near future. So for that, We would also like to uh, show our thanks in appreciation to Dr. Joe Powell for your tenacity and continuous pursuit of excellence. May today's successes be the beginning of tomorrow's achievements. We thank you, your ATS family. So I thought I was going to get somebody got me, but that's all right. I'm going to cry in a car. I'm gonna wait till I get in the car. <laughs> now we're gonna get on with the program. So thank you for uh, the patience and thank you, family. I mean, I do, I, I truly love you from the bottom of my heart. Now the next part of our program is called the Student Voices. And this is really important because part of our rebranding work has always been about creating the arts pathways and the post-secondary pathways. And so what you're going to see are several of our students who wanted to celebrate our graduates. Let me tell you a little bit about what we're about to see first, and then we'll get to the other student voices. So Miss Brooklyn that you see on the monitor over there, um, this is a family that's uh, dear to my heart, the Frost family, Monique Deshay, Amari, Brooklyn. So I was actually the administrator for uh, Deshay. And what wound up happening is that Brooklyn actually wound up helping us out because the story that continued to inspire me, because I didn't really know that, about the YouTube and the followers and all the social media, but my children, because I have three sons, told me that they are pretty well known. But the thing about it that a lot of people didn't know is their story. Some of you may know it, some of you may not. But when we're talking about inspiration, when I heard their story, I was inspired. I saw this one photo that uh, Monique Carrillo actually sent to me. And it was a picture of her three children in the back of the car. And it looked like it was about 50 pieces of uh, luggage in the back seat, driving them to and from LA. And you're talking about a commitment and dedication of a parent. It was just something that that image stuck with me. And so when I asked Brooklyn to speak to our graduating class today, she did so because of that image in the example of inspiration. And the one quote that was shared with me before we start the video, it said, we packed up our car with our clothes and our dreams and we drove off. That to me stayed in my mind. And I said today, I would love for us to hear from Ms. Brooklyn and her special message for our graduates. So we'll turn our attention to uh, Ms. Brooklyn. Thank you. 
It's your girl, Brooklyn, but first I want to thank you, Dr. Powell, for inviting me to share my story with you guys, and I really hope this inspires you all. I'm from Seattle, Washington, went to Stevens Elementary, been living in Seattle my entire life before I moved to L.A. Dr. Powell believes that we have an obligation to inspire others, and I think it's only right. Dr. Powell was inspired by our story and thought that I, the one and only, Brooklyn Foss, <laughs> come and, you know, inspire everybody. You know, someone from the community, someone from the South End. And I think it's only right. I believe that everyone has a purpose. I moved to LA when I was around 11 years old in the sixth grade. And we came from nothing, you guys. When I say nothing, we came from nothing. We came from driving driving to LA 18 hours away with only $100. You know, $100. My mom believed in our dreams. So she thought it was only right to get up and get out of Seattle and follow our dreams. It's so much more. It's so much more on the outside of Seattle. So much more telling you guys like a lot of people want to stay in seattle and that's totally fine but you want to follow your dream you follow it no matter who no matter who's not there no matter who you know you're doing it for you and that's what we have to normalize these days doing things for you of course you can do other things for people you know that's how you gain your blessings but you do it for you we went from you know sleeping on other people's floors to having our own apartment, to asking people to buy our uniforms, to buying other people uniforms, you know? And I say that because, you know, I want that to inspire a lot of people, motivate people. Whatever you think you wanna do, you go do it. You can't be lazy and say, oh, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, but not do anything to do those things, you know? Work hard, hard work pays, off. I too believe that we all have a moral obligation to be an inspiration to others because we all are free spirits either driven by, in need of, or in pursuit of and dream. And once again, congratulations to the ATS class of 2021. We will go into more student voices because again, our work is around voice and choice. Our goal and our commitment is to creating the arch pathways. And so what we're going to see is just what some of our students have been engaging in. And some other students wanted to do this as a part and be a part of your celebration of you. So without further ado, we'll go back to the screen for some of our student voices. I love every part of me. From my hair to my toes, my heart and mind devoted to what I stand. Sometimes I get lost in who I am and lost in the abyss of love. Sometimes to the point where people take control of my reins and I get so lost in love that I lose control of me and this love that has caused me pain. I lose the embodiment of my beautiful, vibrant soul and my sweetheart who became cold because of this. But I'm here to confirm that there's never any toll of this and for that my soul will never forget nor miss. Hold your composure, don't sweat it, give to where it's appreciated, where it's relevant. Be quiet, time is the essence, now or never, life is a lesson. I am me, unapologetically, I don't care about what you got going on or think, so don't waste your time telling me things. I wish I knew about the pain and struggle, I wish I knew the hardships were normal, running and jumping through hurdles. I wish I could have prepared, but prepare for what? Prepare for the infinite amount of unknowns? Prepare for the time I found out my friend passed through a phone? Or when I had to split from my brother while I came and thought of me wishing I was living in another? But I am me, love for all who loves all. No one's ever told me it'll be like this. 10 years old, I was only a child. I was too afraid to smile. No one's ever told me there would be days like this. Everywhere I go, I'm being shamed for who I am. Shame on me for being black. Shame on me because my life is someone else's custom. No one's ever told me walking into a store. Take off my hood, hands out my pocket, so it doesn't look like I'm stealing. No one's ever told me this world will be easy. All I've been told 
was to stay strong, never give up, don't fold under pressure. No one's ever told me I would have to live in a world like this. A world that nobody wants to see you win. A world where it's like crabs in a bucket. A world where the people's closest to you will turn on you. But as for me, as for me, y'all sit and stare, questioning me, worrying about me, but sitting here turning on me. But in reality, y'all is just helping me maximize what God's asked of me. All I've been told was to trust in God, believe in God, and he will show you the way. And I continue to do that because that's what I've been told. Never have I been told. No one's ever told me. Welcome to Triple Threat Podcast. Where we talk about anything and everything. Nothing is off limits. It's called Triple Threat, but there's five of us. We're your hosts. I'm Samantha. I'm Jennifer. What's up, y'all? I'm Alasia. And I'm Victor. My name is Leilani, but y'all could call me Lily. In this season of Triple Threat Podcast, we talk about daily issues we face in our day-to-day lives. For example, like... Identity, astrology, and spirituality deportation and immigration laws also with like kids in cages we also talk about gun violence what's been going on in our community and asian hate all that stuff be sure to follow us on spotify and instagram at triple threat 206 so graduates i hope that you recognize that your underclassmen did these these poems for you because they wanted to make sure that you knew how much they cared about you and how much they were thinking about you. So I hope that these poems have some type of a meaning for you and that you hear the words that they're saying. The, the next voice you will hear is our counselor, Miss E. She would come up and uh, do our student award presentation. So uh, Miss E, let's welcome Miss E. Today, we'd like to recognize the accomplishments of some of our graduates. It took them all a lot of work to get here. Some have earned awards for the work that they have done. First of all, I would like to present students who fulfilled the requirements for the Washington State College Bound Scholarship. This means that they've earned a diploma and they've also earned a GPA above 2.0. The following students are Supreme Benton, Alasia Cook, Mia Davis, Latrez Jefferson, Victor Kiedala, and Savannah Washington. All of these students fulfilled a promise they made as eighth graders. They were inspired by those around them to make it, and they have. This scholarship will help them at any one of the public colleges in the state of Washington, whether it be for job training at a community college or a four-year degree for their bachelor's degree. So congratulations. The second award is presented by the Seattle School Scholarship Fund. Our recipient is not here this evening. This is for Teodoro Viveros Campos. We have a program called the Allied Art Foundation in the city of Seattle. And each year they ask us to nominate three students to receive recognition for artwork, either fine arts, literature, or speaking. The recipients this year, if you would stand 
Oh, actually, I have a certificate for you, Supreme Betton. Several years ago, the city of Seattle started a program called Seattle Promise, which guarantees any graduate of the Seattle public schools with a high school diploma tuition for two years at a community college. We have three participants who managed to make it through the guidelines and will be starting at a community college this fall. If you would like to stand and take a bow, Nayeli Machado, Patisi Matiaki, Ray Mohammed, Cool. Finally, one of the great things about Seattle is that they recognize that our students come from a great variety of cultural backgrounds. And so they've devised a way to recognize the fact that they are fluent, not only in English, but in the language of their heritage. One recipient, Magan Mohammed, is not here tonight. We have another recipient, Alvin Perez. If you would come up, his, the language of his heritage is Tagalog. Okay, so in Tagalog, congratulations, Benabati Kita. It is my pleasure and privilege to introduce you to Savannah Washington, valedictorian of the class of 2021, Sugiyama High School at Southlake. Okay, hi you guys. I'm here today to thank my family, my friends, and the staff at Sugiyama High School for helping me come this far. Be Before I came to Sugiyama, I had very poor grades and felt like giving up. When I got here, I dedicated myself to keeping up with my grades, and I finally got the attention and support I needed to succeed. And today I stand before you as the valedictorian of the class of 2021. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't have done this without my family reminding me every day that I got this. So to all the graduates, if you feel like giving up, just find those people in your life who believe in you. And remember, we got this. <laughs> so guess what, family? Guess what we have? One more piece for you before we get to our graduates. So hang in there. And we're going to have this special slideshow that was put together. And after the shy show, the next voices you will be hearing are from our grads.
I have a question. Is it all right if I ask a question? One, one question. Are we ready, family? No, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't. I'm gonna ask the question again because I didn't. Family, are we ready? All right, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. You convinced me. So without further ado, we're gonna have uh, Miss Eve come up because I think it's time for us to celebrate and bring our graduates home. Is that all right with you? All right, Miss Eve. All right. Supreme Benton. Alaysia Cook. Mia Davis. Enrique Ricky Hernandez. Adrian Hurtado Vasquez. Elias Jaimez. King Latrez Jefferson. Victor Kiodara. Jenny Kiyodara. Naya Mott. Naeli Makado. Petisi Matiaki. The one and only Ray.
Vasichi Motokana. Alvin Perez. Nashara Presley. Savannah Washington. Tylea Wiggins. Family and, and community and friends, the students of Allen T. Sugiyama High School at South Lake, class of 2021, having met all of the graduation requirements of the Seattle Public Schools and the state of Washington, are prepared to graduate. Please prepare to be accepted by Dr. Keisha Scarlett. Thank you, Principal Dr. Brown. By the authority vested in me as the school board director of Seattle Public Schools, I recognize and accept the 2021 graduates of Allen T. Sujiyama High School at Southlake High School. I approve the granting of their diplomas. Congratulations. All right, graduate Stan, graduate Stan. Please take your tassel from the right and move it to the left. And you are now high school graduates. Congratulations. Yes, you are done. You are.